Hey there, I'm Daniel from VoiceFlow. In this video, we're going to show you how you can make an API call from your assistant. Now, I'm in my VoiceFlow assistant here, and there are two ways that I can do an API call. The first one is the simplest way, and that's using the API step in VoiceFlow. So this allows you to make any type of API request from VoiceFlow and actually receive or send information. And the second way is through a function. Now a function, and I've got one I'm reported in my project here for returning information from Superbase, um, is basically a set of JavaScript with fetch requests that's making a fetch request somewhere and actually using JavaScript to transform that information or perform certain actions on it. So if I go into my function here, Superbase, um, you can see that it is a bunch of JavaScript that's basically taking in input variables that I've given, it's making a fetch request, and then it's actually returning the information and formatting it into output variables for my project. So this allows me to pull information and push information to a tool like Superbase. Now, you can create your own function, and we have an entire dedicated video on how to do that. Um, you can also go to voiceflow.com slash functions to be able to see some of the pre-made ones from ourselves and the community. If I go back into my project here, we're going to use the API step in this video. Now, the API step is fairly straightforward. So we're going to use a sample API here um, called JSON placeholder that just returns customer information. And if I hit send request, this allows you to make sure that the call is actually working inside of VoiceFlow. And so you can see here that this specific API returns um, a bunch of information about different users with specific IDs. And if I go ahead and add on the user ID in the API request, then it just returns the information for that user. Now, there's a couple of different things that you can do with the API step in VoiceFlow. The first one is actually insert variables. So let's say something like a user ID may actually differ depending on who's logging on to your system. So to add a variable into an API call, you're just going to hit a squiggly bracket here, and you're going to add in a variable. So in this case, I'm going to add in user ID. And so now when I go send that request, it's going to ask me for what the value is for this variable. So I'm just going to add one, and you can see that it makes the API call successfully. Now the second thing you can do is you can add in your headers and parameters. So if you're using an API that requires authentication, you can do that here. If it's a post request, you can add in a body as well. And you can also capture information from the API reply directly into a variable. So let's say that I wanted to capture the user's name. So in this case, the entire response is saved in a variable called response. And I want to capture the name, so it's going to be response.name. So let's go response.name. And we're going to apply this to a variable called username. And so now if I test this out, by creating a text step here and just saying, welcome back, Oops. username, and give that a run. Oops. So you can see that we got an error here. So that's because it looks like the user ID actually wasn't set. So let's go ahead and just kind of hard code this in here at one and run through this again. Great. So you can see that this works successfully. And now we want to actually integrate this into our flow. So I'm going to go back and set this as the variable user ID. And now we're going to put this into our flow here. So let's start modifying this out a bit. So first off, we're going to start with the API call. Then we're going to say, welcome back, user name, so Leanne in this case. And then we're going to say, how can I help you? And we're going to listen for a intent. So a user can now type anything. So this is pretty straightforward, but again, now you can start using these variables in logic or other actions. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that this user ID is actually going to come from somewhere. Now there's two ways. One is we can simulate it. So in this case, I'm just going to use something called a set step, and we're just going to set that variable. So we're going to set user ID to one. Um, and this will just manually set the user ID. But the other thing you can do is that when you start your assistant, you can actually pass in a bunch of variables. If I go over and head over to our developer documentation, you can see that when uh, you actually start the assistant, you're able to pass in custom variables. So you can pass in something like a user ID, or you can actually pass in your own variables like username, email, or other ones. So this will automatically pass in um, a user ID into your voice assistant when it starts. But for the sake of this demo, we're just going to manually set it to show you what it looks like. So let's go ahead and start the conversation. You can see here that right away, um, it set the the value user ID to one, and it said, welcome back, Leanne Graham, and it was able to actually use that variable in my assistant. So that's a really quick overview of how to use an API step within VoiceFlow. Again, once the actual value is pulled in and saved, 
you can now use it throughout your flow, whether you want to use it for uh, different logic steps, um, like an if condition where you can actually say if variable username equals a certain value. Uh, you can also use JavaScript in your system as well. So you can write some simple JavaScript to actually maybe parse out more variables from an API call or actually uh, just handle all of that logic in JavaScript itself. I hope that was helpful. Um, there are other examples uh, using API steps in some of the other videos in this playlist uh, that allow you to use things like Zendesk, um, Supabase, or other types of tools with your Voiceful Assistant. But I hope that was helpful. Uh, remember to check out voiceful.com functions to see more functions, um, and we'll see you in the next video.